Hello. I just wanted to show you um, a progress that um, I took several pictures of a painting that I was doing. So I'm an amateur painter and I use acrylics basically, <clears throat> though I also use water-based oils. Yes, these are oils that are water-soluble. And I also sometimes use pas pastels and watercolors. This is an acrylic painting and I just wanted to show you the progress of this painting. I really liked the end result. Again, as an amateur painter, I really liked and enjoyed doing this. This is a building that's in Charleston, Massachusetts. And I was coming back from work and I was walking. This was about 8 p.m. Uh, and I was actually at the phone with my sister. Uh, we were discussing about your know, summertime and so on and so forth. This was at the end of July. And I saw this gorgeous uh, sunset and I just said, I got to paint it. I carry my sketchbook with me. It's not really very uh, heavy. And I actually drew very quickly the sketch. And I took a photo. Always uh, use reference photos. I find that very, very useful. Um, if, if you're not actually painting plein air, it's, it's hard to remember the details. So this very first stage of this acrylic painting, what I basically did was block in the large shapes. Now, you know, some people can do this in only one color. I decided to start using the local colors that I was going to end up using. So you've got the uh, very dark greens um, for the trees in the front and sort of the blues and violets with some grays in the building. And of course, the sky. The sky was the lightest one, but it's, it's a sunset. So it's a bit fooling on how light or how dark this has to be. And at the beginning, I did realize where the light was coming from and I wanted to do a very quick wash. So this is a very quick block in of the large shapes. Um, the other thing is there were two lamp posts and they give you the sense of perspective. So since I had only retained one of them, uh, the placement of one of them and the other one I didn't, what I did very quickly was to wipe out the area of the lamp post that is farther away. Uh, this actually makes it easier for you to relate to the tones and be able to finish the painting correctly. So the next stage, as you can see, the lamp posts are, are a little bit more uh, defined. And what I also started doing was refining clouds and the shapes of the clouds. Um, also, the lighter tones, I wanted to start making sure that the light was coming through clearly. And I started working a lot more on lightening the um, the area of the sky. This is a bit tricky because lightening uh, the yellow with white would make it cooler. So I was using uh, yellow ochre uh, with, with white. I also explain at the end what my palette is. It's a very limited palette. Um, also, I refined the shape of the building. It is a, a, a it's, it's actually eight sides, it's octagonal, but I drew it as hexagonal because I didn't realize that I was making the, uh, the different walls uh, in a different perspective. And I did not want to change at the end the way that it looked. But there's a clock tower. And I really liked the way the reflections was, were coming from one side and making the other side darker with violets. So the predominance of the blue is actually pushing back the um, the bridge you see at the at the back end, which is the highway, it's actually Route One, and uh, that's Tobin Bridge. And I just didn't want to make any details in there. Um, the the whole painting does not really have any details. It's sort of a capture of the moment. But importantly, when you start looking at the tones, uh, you can decide if you want to start adding the lights later or not. But this was in my second stage. I added the lighter areas. And if you can see, I was sculpting the trees by using negative painting. So from the previous image, it was all a block of green. Now I'm putting holes where the tree leaves will be actually showing the back building. So you use the same color you are using for the different facets of the building or walls of the building. You use it to sculpt it out or the sky, 
or the Tobin Bridge. So it is important that you keep in account in your mind how do you want to sculpt those trees. I did that the same on the left hand side on the tree. As I mentioned, I resized the building, the first version, it was very, very tiny, very small. And I realized it should be larger when I looked at my reference photo. And also I added the faint structures on the highway. So these are very, very light, but the tone is darker than the sky. So you need to play around with which colors are you going to use to show these uh, street lights on the highway. Uh, on the next stage, I was really struggling with the sky. I didn't like the way it was looking. It had a lot of turquoise that wasn't really there. And this was really hard in acrylics. Um, if this had been an oil painting, it would have been probably easier to blend the different colors. But with the acrylics, they dry very quickly. So the transition from the blues to the oranges and pinks and yellows was very hard to do. And that's basically in this step, I really struggle a lot. So I was trying to adjust the tonality of the sky, uh, making sure that I could see the bright lights, especially on that straight band at the bottom of the Tobin Bridge, and then what hits the building. I did like the way that the building was looking just with that brush stroke very quickly on certain areas of the building where the light's hitting, but I was having a lot of trouble with the uh, image of the sky and with the clouds. So this was a uh, sort of frustrating, uh, but also rewarding because you start working on it and, and you want to make sure that it's okay. Uh, if you can see the lamps uh, have very, very little work on them. I like the idea of not looking like a photo. Um, needless to say, I wouldn't be able to paint like a photo. I'm just an amateur painter, but um, the sense of painterly images, uh, you, you know it's a brush stroke and you're not blending there. It's easier not to blend with acrylics. Uh, I put the reflection of the yellows from the sky and of course the blues that give you the idea. It was a sunset, it was an evening scene. Um, and this is the uh, final um, way that it, it ended up. Uh, it's really hard sometimes to get a good photo of the painting. Uh, the painting looks a bit more, it looks a bit better, but you can see the brush strokes on the sky. I decided to do them vertical and make sure that I could mm, transition from the blues to the yellows. Uh, there's a very faint orangey pink in some of the clouds and some of the reflections of the clouds. I realized they were too dark in my original blocking and in my previous step of the painting. But at the end, the painting, actually, I'm very happy with it. And uh, it's basically using a lot of impasto at the very end. So don't give up, uh, paint, have fun, and I hope you enjoy this. Thank you very much.